Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. Hope everybody's having a great day. So, I've got a great story. I'm excited to read it to you. It's titled, They Knew About Me Before I Knew About Them. That gives me the chills. <laughs> okay, it just starts out. Hi, Leslie. I've been meaning to send my story for some time now. So, here it is. It was the fall of 2019 that, for some reason, I was attracted to a Bigfoot Sasquatch Facebook page. Last I heard of Bigfoot, the Patty film was deemed a hoax. My mother was an astrologer with a very open mind, and we were raised with the fact that we were souls that lived eternally. Ghosts, spirits existed, our house was haunted, etc. So to find out Bigfoot actually did exist was a surprising. I started reading all the individual encounters, finding YouTube videos, etc., I couldn't get enough. As I was doing all these readings, I started to realize that where I lived was exactly the environment that Sasquatch is known to live. I currently live in a rental home, very private with no neighbors, next to a mountain and surrounded by acres of meadows, forestry, and located about 100 to 150 yards above a river in Washington State, western Washington. The elk love to roam here, and based on my trail cameras, they generally come to the fields around 2 to 3.30 a.m. three times a week, more in the winter time as they come down from the mountains. After realizing this, I started to recall all these odd happenings around my rental home the last three years, from 2016 to 2019. Number one. I walk to the river and sit or meditate on a rock, on a big rock, during the spring and summer months. I cannot tell you how many times I felt I was being watched and would look around. I couldn't tell you if it would suddenly go quiet with the birds or the forest animals as I was sitting next to a loud river. But I was always looking around thinking somebody was there. Number two. Once I was walking down the road in front of my house. This road has a parking lot on one side for a popular mountain hike. The other side consists of thick trees and bushes along the road with a chain link fence very barely visible. As I was walking near this fence, suddenly there was this deep growl like I'd never heard before. I don't know what it was and just stepped up my pace real quick to get out of the area. I didn't look to see what it was. Number three, in September of 2016 or 2017, I was camping in my front yard with my Pomeranian. It was still hot from summer and I loved to camp. Our tent was pitched about 15 feet from our front door on our lawn. After a few hours of sleeping, I woke suddenly. Daisy, my Pomeranian, was also awake and looking or hearing something outside. As I was laying there wondering why we were awake, a putrid smell started to hit my nostrils. Then suddenly, and this is weird, I was overcome with the peacefulness and I fell back to sleep. I can't even explain this as I should have felt fear. But no, just this peaceful feeling came over me. I knew all was well and I fell back to, into a deep sleep. Number four. The next morning when I woke, I went into the house and got ready for work and went out to my car to leave. On my windshield were these brown hairs approximately two to three inches long and a clear slime. No little rodent footprints on the hood of my car, and I thought this was odd. Had never seen this before. Windshield wiper fluid would not clean the clear slime off my windshield, and I had to go to the house for paper towels to wipe it off. Number five, there were a few times our dog, Jack, at nighttime, would just suddenly start barking at the big windows next to the front door. Hair up and wouldn't stop. I just assumed it was another ghost, so I didn't pay much attention to it. And number six, 
few times, it sounded as if someone had thrown a big boulder on top of our sheet metal roof. As it was nighttime, I'm a single parent with two daughters. I most certainly wasn't going out there to investigate. So, a few months after this, I started reading up on Sasquatch. I realized that they are here in my surroundings, so I started gifting them apples down at the river to see if I could make contact. They always took the apples, sometimes all of them at once, sometimes one every day. Some may say that couldn't be that could be any animal, but that's not true. I know this by experience and I will say later on. I bought two trail cameras in the late fall, though I knew by reading other experiences I would not get any pictures of them as they stay away from trail cameras, but I hung them up anyway and put the setting motion on detection, one down at the river and the other utility pole in the meadow below my house where the elk graze. My house sits above the meadow, and next to the meadow is a river. So I go check out my cameras, and I hang them back up periodically. In January or February of 2020, as I was rehanging up the trail cameras on the utility pole at the meadow, I'm saying in my head, after hearing that they are telepathic, okay guys, I don't care if I don't want if you don't want me to see you, I'm fine with that. But I do not want to see you killing an elk, and I don't want you destroying my tail, trail cam or taking it away either. So if you have to get an elk, don't let that be shown on my camera. One and a half weeks went by and I went down to the meadow to retrieve my camera. It's gone. My elderly landlord knows that these are my trail cams hanging up and always leaves them alone. I found the trail cam 10 inches behind the utility pole it been, had been hanging on. Camera face down in the meadow. Now the band with the clasp that secures the camera into place has been opened up and removed from the pole. When I picked the camera up off the ground, the band had been loosely tied into just one single loop. As for the pictures, the first set of pictures were of the elk in the meadow roaming around, and then the next pictures are of the grass. No picture in between of it being taken off the pole or put on the ground. Fast forward to early April 2020. It's been six months now, that I started reading up on them and putting the pieces together. I'm start standing on the front porch, facing the river and talking to my oldest sis sister who lives with me. It's approximately 2 p.m. on a weekday, working from home due to COVID stay home orders. Suddenly, I see this massive Sasquatch walk in between two large trees right in front of the river. My mouth dropped open and my sister asked what's wrong. I could only stammer. I just saw something and couldn't say anything more. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, six months of learning this creature exists and I just see one in broad daylight? I was literally in shock. For two weeks, I couldn't say anything to anyone and I didn't. Nobody would believe me. My daughters were already laughing at my new interest, as it was, and my older sister was skeptical. Let me describe what I saw. From 100 to 150 yards away, he was massive in capital letters. He was not black or orange, like I always hear. He was brown, more like the color of a deer. I understood at that moment why people have said they glide. It was only one step I saw him take between two large trees. But because he was so massive, it looked like he glided. His hair was long and almost looked groomed, not matted, much broader at the chest, so I assumed it was a male. And the way he intentionally walked right there, right where I looked at that time, I knew was no accident. I had read that if Sasquatch shows himself, herself to you. That means they are open to communication. Now, this is early April 2020. My sister died two weeks later in April. 
There are five of us kids, and we are all close. So her death was a blow to us. I always thought my seeing Sasquatch two weeks before her death was odd. I have since read there is an Indian reservation in South Dakota in which they consider the Sasquatch to be the watchers or keepers, and seeing one is a premonition of death in a family. But in the two to three months that followed my sister's death, my sister who lives with me and myself were in kind of a shock. I would sometimes just sit on the front porch, kind of numb, looking back at these days and the happening that occurred afterwards. I think that Sasquatch were aware and were trying to show compassion. Once on the porch, zoned out, I saw this tree below the wood line, edge of the meadow, start to shake, as if somebody had grabbed the trunk and was shaking it as hard as they possibly could. This was so weird but in my zoned-out mind, I didn't question it. I just watched, thinking it was weird. Then a few times, there were loud bangs on the exterior of my bedroom wall at night. I know this to be called house slapping. I knew it was them, and it didn't scare me. In the summertime, we had an incident that was a little too close to home, literally. My sister, myself, and my oldest daughter were on the front porch looking at these odd lights in the night sky. My daughter was saying that they were UFOs. As we were watching them, my sister suddenly says in alarm, What was that? As she's saying that, I felt something, energetically, that was not right. I said, What? And she said, By your car. Something is there. Car is ten feet away from the porch. I immediately am saying, go, 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 pushing her into the house. By now, I'm all shook up by both of these incidents, and looking at my daughter's face was freaking me out even more. I'm saying, what? What did you see? As she's looking out the window, she says, Mom, it's still there. Look. No, Shelby, get away from the window. I was not ready to see what she was seeing. I was totally shook up now. The next day, I asked her to describe what she had seen, as again she thought she saw an alien. She said it was tall and lanky and had no neck. I said, Shelby, that's a trait of a Sasquatch. They have no necks. But it wasn't big, Mom. It was tall and lanky. I said it was probably a juvenile. Later on, I went down to the river and I said aloud, Okay, not cool. You cannot come up to my house with my daughters there. No more. I was pissed. Haven't had any more happenings at my house since then. Well, except the big boulder on the roof last month and occasionally house slapping outside my bedroom wall. Oh, and then there's the empty 500-pound waterfall in my front yard that somehow got pushed over. Oh, and the huge boulder that somehow ended up by our blackberries in our front yard that cannot be moved. Oh, and there was the rocks being thrown at the kitchen window and tapping on the front window that Shelby experienced last month at night time. Okay, well, at least they're not scaring us anymore. Leslie, you once read an encounter by a woman, episode 36 or 37, something around there, in which she had a vision of a Sasquatch mother and her young one. When I heard you read this story, I knew I had to send you my story, as that happened to me too. I was coming up from the river, and suddenly I had this vision in my head of a Sasquatch mother showing me her little one. It was precious. Visions are funny because you never know if it's your imagination or if it's real. Once I heard her story, I knew my vision was real. Also had a vision of my sister standing outside a white door, shaking her head, indicating she was not going back in. She died the next day. Anyway, they are here. I do consider them the watchers here. No harm, but they let us know they're around. Thanks for letting me share my story. Please don't use my name but you are free to contact me with any questions. Thank you. 
Well, thank you. Um, I really enjoyed your story. It was very, very well written. And I love the fact that you labeled them one, two, three, four, five. That was great. And your story was very, very specific. It would be absolutely amazing if we could all have encounters like you had and still continue to have, I can imagine. Ah, anyways. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there. I try to get to at least 15 minutes. Try. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I go over it. So I guess it's uh, like a seesaw. Anyways, don't forget, for those of you who um, don't mind if it's a fictional story, go over and check out. I'm reading the chapters from my book, and uh, pretty soon it'll be available on Amazon to start with, I think. Okay, guys, I love you so much. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And of course, we'll see you back here. I'm not going to say a couple days, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Bye for now. Oh, and don't forget, send in those encounters. I would love it. And I've really got my mind set on doing a thing on rangers. Uh, so if you're a ranger and you have a story, or if you know a ranger that has a story, please send it in. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, that's all. Bye for now.